Hi, I'm James, and today we are taking a look at this, which is the Dell Inspiron 15 5502 laptop with 11th generation core. And we are going to start off by removing the screws in the base. We have four here at the front, two in the centre row, and three at the back. So we are going to remove these in sequence, and I'm just going to place them off to the side in the same arrangement that I have removed them. This machine has reasonably good upgradability. Uh, we have a pair of M2 sockets, which we will discuss one, or M2 slots, which we will discuss once we're inside. Uh, two DIMM slots, and also there is the possibility to upgrade bits like the wireless. These front screws and the side ones and this centre back one are all the same, but I still just replace them in the same positions which I removed them from. And we're going to leave these two back corner ones to last. And the reason for that is these two screws are retained. So what we'll find is as we undo them, they actually lift the chassis up, or the back panel I should say, from the chassis. And once they click there, they are fully out. And same here. And what this does is lift the panel up and will give us a gap where we can insert our pry tool, or should do in most cases. So with that done, we're going to take our pry tool and go in at the back corner here, and then run down the side, just gently applying a little bit of pressure just to release these clips. With that done, we're then going to go other side and do the same and just begin working our way down. Always use plastic pry tool for this, don't use something metal just because you don't want to start marking the laptop. And with that done we can now run along the back here and just gently pulling on the chassis just to help release it. And then with that done at the back and the sides, we can lift forward and lift off. So once inside the machine, our first job is to disconnect the battery. To do that, we can simply get a fingertip each side of the edge of the connector and gently peel that out. If we are looking to replace the battery, then we can remove the M2 screws, there are five around the battery. And this is a H5CKD type battery in this particular machine. Switching up to a Philips Type 0, or size 0, screw but drive a bit just to get better purchase on these particular screws. Uh, I had used a double zero uh, smaller bit for the base, but on these this is more suitable. So with that done, those screws out, we can then simply lift up the battery there. If you are replacing the battery, be sure to remove this cable, so lift on this end and peel out this cable because you'll need to attach it to the new battery. And then to refit the battery, we just position that back in place and screw it back down. We're of course going to leave the battery disconnected for now and we'll reconnect it at the end. So under here we have the two DIMM modules. This particular model comes with a single 8GB DIMM and we have a second DIMM slot here where we can install a DDR4 3200 module and that simply press in at an angle, press down and it will clip into place. 
The SSD is located here, which is SATA, uh, sorry, SSD slot 1, M M2 slot, and then we have a second SSD slot here. We're going to look first of all at this one, which is marked as PCIe 4 times only, and specifically states on the sticker no Optane, SATA or PCIe 2 times devices may be used in it. So to remove this drive, we are going to undo the screw and remove the drive. Because we then want to fit a 22H drive, this is only being used for example purposes because it is actually a SATA drive and would not work in this machine, um, but it is one I have to hand to demonstrate with. So we slot, slide out this little bracket, turn it around and slide it in to these other mounting points. With that done, we can then insert the drive and screw it into position. Because we're not using this, we're now going to remove and swap this back to the 2230 drive. We simply remove the M2 2280, then carefully push this down to remove the bracket. Again, switch it round and reinsert here before refitting and screwing down our 2230 drive. Now this second SSD slot is, according to the service manual and in fact my testing, is absolutely fine to use for SATA type devices. Uh, you can also fit PCIe 2 or 4 or Optane drives in here, so any M2 2280 drive should work in this one. Unfortunately, what Dell do not include, there are these little screw mounts which aren't for fixing down the SSD, they're actually for fixing down a mounting bracket which then the SSD screws into. Uh, this Dell's service manual says is available separately, however, um, I couldn't find it for sale yet. So what I did manage to do just for using this drive in it briefly was to thread a screw into that point there. Um, but you may find you need to source an SSD mounting bracket for this because Dell don't include it with the machine and this one here can't be used over here. Um, like I say, if I find the part number for that, I will put it in the description below or where you can source it. Turning our attention to the fan, and if you're wanting to remove the fan to repair or replace it, first job is to, again, just gently get the edges of this fan connector and slide it out. And then we have two screws holding the fan down. With those out, we can then lift, and I'm not going to break that little seal for the moment, but by lifting it, we can access the heatsink for cleaning, or we could completely detach it to replace the fan. In fact, it's not attached there, so yeah, we can remove that fairly easily, clean the heatsink if we needed to. Replacing it, we just, again, just slot under this little rubber strip press into position and screw back down. If we were wanting to clean the heatsink we have or repaste the heatsink we have four screws here. Remove those, lift off and you can apply fresh thermal paste to your heatsink and processor. To replace the wireless card, uh, say if you wanted to go to a Wi-Fi 6 card, this is again a fairly simple process. We have single screw here holding down the M2 wireless card, little metal bracket on top of it. We can slide out the card and then it's simply a case of unclipping these two antennas and then a bit fiddly reconnecting them and reinserting the card like so before lining back up 
and refitting the mounting screw and bracket of course. Once that's done and we're happy we've finished with the machine we can then take our battery connector and carefully reinsert that and then with that done oh must remember to reconnect the fan that done we can refit the base I would start by pressing down at the front and along the sides and then we are going to start returning to a double O screwdriver bit screw down the two back corners and clipping in around those and then the other once we're happy with the fitment around those simply refit the remaining screws and we're all done I hope you found this video useful and do let me know in the comments if it has helped you fix or upgrade your 5502. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them and like if this has been helpful to you. I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.